I didn't expect people to have such strong emotions about Bronson Reed, a.k.a. The Thick Boy, returning to WWE. I, because I wasn't expecting it, this is a bonus Smart Tears segment. When I did my Raw review, I just basically talked about how it was great that some people were in their feelings. And that was kind of the end of it. Until I decided, you know what, how how deep in their feelings are they? And I struck across some people who were incredibly deep into their feelings. So I decided I cannot not share this with... I, I would be screwing you guys if I did not share with you how people are upset at Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed, a.k.a. Jonah. The guy who went to Impact in between the time that he left WWE and went to New Japan, the guy who made a stop in Impact to do like jobs for like Josh Alexander. And and nobody's talking about this, by the way. Nobody cares about that. The guy who stopped off in Impact to do jobs. Was it Josh Alexander that he was doing jobs to? Or was it some other mid-card guy like a Sammy Callahan or something like that? It was somebody. It was nobody of note. Let's put it like that. And it didn't last very long. But this is what they this is what they think about Jonah going back to WWE. If I beat Okada, you'll never catch me in the same ring as the Miz. Just saying. Uh somebody said, <laughs> he went from a match with Okada months ago to this. Uh which is him beating up uh <laughs> <sighs> Jonah going from the next big heavyweight gaijin monster in Japan to being the lapdog of Mike Mizanin is nasty business. New Japan Pro Wrestling trusted this man enough to beat fucking Okada. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here's one of the responses. Did you hear the reaction he got? Or better yet, ask any WWE fan if they know what the G1 Climax is or Okada. And somebody said, did he get a reaction? And he says, no. When he arrives, he got a small reaction from the Tsunami Splash. But WWE crowds typically pop for moves by big men. Uh. <laughs> so, no. You know, you're dropping a big, huge star on us. Jesus Christ, what a, what a theft WWE did from New Japan. They stole one of their middling mid card gaijin heavyweights whatever uh, <laughs> uh here's a here's an interesting response to that he quote did all this great stuff in japan he came out to zero reaction also didn't hear ish about him when he was in japan doing those things now he goes to wwe he actually has buzz ironic yeah that's a that's a really good point right really good point um Jonah is a fucking idiot. Uh, this is terrible. <laughs> At the end of the day, money talks. The economy is rough these, this day and age. Next year, there could be a recession happening as well. I may not agree with his decision, but I understand why if the reason is money. Uh, ah, yes. The, it's the wrestling business, not the wrestling friendships. And here's, here's another one. I know you're doing it for the money, but damn, bro. You just beat Okada cleanly a few months ago, and you signed with the company that decided to let you go. Yes, he should. Was he going to beat Okada at Wrestle Kingdom or something? No. I didn't see. When I looked at the Wrestle Kingdom card, I didn't see him on it. Is it because he told them he was going back to WWE, and then so they decided to write him out? Or what? I don't remember him doing anything before he went to the G1. What was he doing that was so special in New Japan that these people are so in their feelings? Uh, so here's a, so that's how he debuted wasted potential. Yes, it, it's very you're wasting the shit out of the Miz by having him try to carry Thick Boy, 400 pounds of garbage. He has to now carry for the next several weeks to try to get this guy over. For Christ's sake! At the end of the day, it's New Japan's fault. They should stop booking ex WWE wrestlers like monsters and focus on their own stars. Yes, their own stars like Jay White who's been on top for five years. Okada, who's been on top for fucking 10 years or more. Oh, Naito, who's been on top, well, somewhere near the top, for upwards of eight years. The only person they've let squeeze in there is Shingo Takagi, and what is he doing now? 
You're not doing anything. You're not doing nothing. You're doing nothing. Uh, here's another one. Couldn't agree more. The response he got when he beat Okada was insane. The response he got when he helped the Miz, not so much. Yeah, because nobody cares about fucking this guy. And here's the thing. There was a rule in place until fucking January that you couldn't even respond. You couldn't even cheer in Japan. So what a what a what an insane reaction with the muted reaction. I guess the golf claps was just so overwhelming. Come on. What is wrong with these? This one is in uh what is this Brazilian? Um uh, what is what language they speak in Brazil? Uh Portuguese. See, New Japan really needs to fuck off and stop trying to rebuild former WWEs who will jump ship the first opportunity they get to come back. Start pushing Joshis and wrestlers in the dojo. Yeah, because they never do that. They never push their own dojo boys. Um. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Oh, my goodness. Uh, David Bixon span. He's the only one. I, well, if they're a wrestling journalist that everybody knows, I'm not going to leave them anonymous when it comes to the smart tears. I think we've already established that, right? Uh, David Bixon span. He went from beating Okada in the G1 to being the Miz's heavy. And then the responses have been, uh, <laughs> responses are hilarious. And he's going to be plenty, he's going to make plenty more money being Mrs. Lackey than he ever would beating a wrestling god Okada, bitch and span. Yes, that is true. The Miz is a bigger draw and does more for wrestlers' careers than Okada. Okada is overrated and past his prime anyways. Okada is like the Hulk Hogan of Japan. He wouldn't go away when he should. Uh, BYW? BYW? Uh, what does that mean? Put some respect on the Miz's name. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what BYW is. What does that mean? His bank account is probably looking a lot heavier as a result. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, nobody, not going to lie, nobody else besides wrestling fans knows who Okada is. Well, if you're in Japan, you know who he is. If you're in the United States, you kind of, you know, you don't know. Let's be honest. You probably saw that weird looking Japanese guy from Impact. Uh, not Impact, AEW. Uh, even I'm forgetting where he was. Uh, sometimes the mighty do kneel to the Miz. I hope bad dude Tito comes out of this all okay. I like that guy. I like bad dude Tito too. What the fuck does that have to do with Jonah? That's what I want to know. They're built the same way. They kind of look like brothers. Um, bad dude Tito is a sort of a heavyweight wrestler. Um, I know he, he wrestled in, uh, blood sport. That's where I seen him. He might've wrestled in some other places, but maybe I just don't remember. Um, somebody says he went from wrestling on a subscription service and access TV to national television. Well, he went from national television to wrestling in dingy halls in the United States, complaining on WWE about WWE on podcasts. Then he wrestled in a impact zone and had 152 people in it. Then he went to start wrestling on access TV and now he's back in front of thousands, but not getting a crowd reaction. Not looking very good for, uh, for thick boy. It's not, not looking very good. Um, they had to have paid him some big stacks to come back. I hope not. You know, I hope he gets paid in cheeseburgers and uh, IOUs. Uh, <laughs> dude, New Japan has been dead in the water height wise outside of its own bubble sphere since COVID hit. He got out and got a paycheck on a TV show people can watch. I don't like the guy, but this isn't hard to grasp. I agree with that. He will be getting a heart. Um, uh, <laughs> These people are ridiculous, bro. Um, not to be one of those let it play out people, but Bronson Reed has been back all of five minutes and y'all are acting like he's been given a death sentence. Well, I think the Miz is the one who got the death sentence. The Miz could be great. He could be a very good upper mid card heel if he was allowed to do the Miz. Instead, all the Miz has been forced to do is try to put over Fucking new NXT black and gold folks. It's unfortunate. Uh, somebody says, y'all are really downplaying The Miz. The Miz is one of the greatest wrestlers and a self-made superstar that didn't have Cena, Reigns, or Randy's push. Pairing him with The Miz might be a good thing. Well, it was worked out for Logan Paul. It didn't quite work out that well for Dexter Loomis or Tommaso Ciampa, but Ciampa got hurt. So, you know, it wasn't really Miz's fault. We'll see how it turns out. 
Um, I ain't gonna lie. I can't think of anyone that associated with the Miz, whether as a heavy partner or lackey, that actually benefited from being at his side or even got on or past his level. Hoping it changes with Triple H running creative, but then again, you can't surpass the Miz. That's the thing because the Miz is ninety times, ninety nine percent of the time, the Miz is the most entertaining part of whatever thing he's doing. The reason why Damian Sandow, everybody thought Damian Sandow was going to be so great. He was the one who was the real talent in this whole thing. Remember that? I remember. I remember it. Everybody swore up and down this guy was going to be so much better when he got away from the Miz. As soon as he got away from the Miz, what happened? Crowd reaction went through the toilet. It's flushed clockwise down the toilet. It was all just because he was paired up with the Miz. You know? 90% of the time, it's the Miz. And you just don't know it because he's that good. You know? It's fucking hilarious that people refuse to give him credit for it. But the Miz is usually the reason why anything that he's involved with gets over. And because it's funny. And he's very humorous. Here's the one that makes sense. He went from being a mid Carter with potential to being a mid Carter with potential. <laughs> what right? Um, here's another one. The irony is that he once represented the mighty don't kneel. And here he is kneeling to the Miz. He's not kneeling though. He was standing next to the Miz. The, the Miz was actually barely standing up. Um, I don't, I don't know, man. We don't even know what the nature of their relationship is. He could just be like a, a hired gun for the Miz. We don't know. You know, we we didn't get that far into this storyline yet. Th this is what, what part of what makes it funny is the knee jerk reactions. That's one of my favorite smart tears. You know, like I know people probably got on my case when I did the whole Austin theory thing. You know, just that's me getting caught up sometimes. But the knee jerk reaction is hilarious. That's what makes it so funny. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. But now all the Pududesu wrestling elitists are going to, you know, their tie is real stiff because they they thought they had one of their guys and it got swiped away from them. But uh, it's ridiculous. Here's your boy, Big Nasty, Alfred Kanawa. As a New Japan World subscriber who will be gladly staying up past 2 a.m., to cover Russell Kingdom 17, believe me when I say Bronson Reed beating Okada means next to nothing once you log off this app. He absolutely should have secured the bag in WWE. Good for him. I agree. 100% I agree. Him beating Okada means fuck all nothing. Okada has lost matches to bums. It, it doesn't matter. Plus, it's pro wrestling. All right? It literally doesn't mean anything. He beat Okada, yet yeah, Okada is the one main eventing the biggest show of the year, not him. Oh, that win means so much. Okada is the one main eventing the biggest show of the year, not him. And then we don't know, they might be doing some kind of a partnership where maybe Bronson Reed can get, gets to go back to New Japan. They letting fucking bullet head Carl Anderson do it, um, which is pretty funny. Here's another one. So this dork would rather have great matches than to make a lot of money and fame. Who but 46 people even know who Okada is, let alone who he faces Bronson Reed. Yeah, I didn't even know. I, I didn't follow the G1 this year. I, I didn't care. New Japan is stale as shit. Um, I didn't know that he even beat Okada. I know more about this because this is what got him trending, Jonah. Not him beating Okada. I don't. And why is it, why do we care that he beat Okada so much? Like, why do we care about that so badly? You know, like, he beat Okada. What are they going to do? Like, Okada never lost a match or anything like that. Who the fuck cares, bro? Who cares, man? None of this shit matters. None of this shit matters that much. Um, seems some people are upset Bronson Reed returned because he went from beating Okada to being Mrs. Lackey. I'm not a finance guy. But I'm guessing he was offered more money to come back. Wrestling business. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. One of the responses was, clearly you're not a finance guy. As you said, where you'd rather see someone perform in a match against like nobody outside of Japan knows, Okada, than the fame and fortune of being in WWE. Well, Everybody has these dreams of being in WWE, for Christ's sake. I mean, I know that it's weird, but um, it is what it is. What it is. You know, <laughs> what, can, what more can you say? Here's another one. I have to wonder the calculus that has you go, hey, thanks for putting me over Okada clean. 
I'm going to go be the Miz's hired muscle now. It's probably that he saw the paycheck that he had to do to go to Japan and saw the paycheck working for the WWE and decided, hmm, I'm going to go work for WWE because working in Japan, you beat Okada. That's great. That's something they could talk about. But ultimately, are you factored into the plans in the future? No. You're not factoring into the... Like, everybody keeps talking about this like it, like it meant something. Like he won the fucking world title. He beat a wrestler. That's it. You know? I'm pretty sure if I looked it up, Okada lost more than one match in that whole G1. I can almost guarantee it. I'm not going to look it up, though, because I'm not a, not, a, not a nerd. I don't care. I don't care enough to look it up. Here's another one. Man, and I was just wondering what happened to Jonah in New Japan Pro Wrestling and the Mighty Don't Kneel. He was pushed super hard in the G1 with the win over Akata, no less, and a great big boy match versus Cobb. But alas, people got to do what's right for themselves, too. I guess he meant do. Now, since he said great big boy match versus Cobb, I'm guessing he lost that match because he didn't say he won it. So I'm guessing he lost to Jeff Cobb. <laughs> Who cares? Nobody cares, man. This thing is, it, they're so emotional. Why are you doing, why are you acting this way? Um, This is hilarious. Um, No knock on Jonah. He seems like a talented dude uh, and seems nice, but that G1 spot really should have gone to Carl Fredericks, huh? Because now it was just a waste of absolute time. Could have given Carl the exact same booking if they wanted to legitimize him. That would mean they actually cared about people outside. For starters, those dojo boys, you can forget it. They got like 10 years before they even get anywhere near a top title in New Japan, at least. They, they talk about New Japan. New Japan is far more structured and hierarchical than even WWE. Right? Literally, if you don't go through the dojo, you better be one of the biggest stars ever. Like an AJ Styles or something like that before you even get to that point. Otherwise, you 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 are a dojo boy. Started when you were like eighteen or nineteen. Good luck. You're not, <laughs> you know, good luck. Unless somebody dies or gets hurt, the chances of you making it up the car, especially now that Okada is only like thirty one or thirty two, forget it. Here's one from one of those uh, super New Japan podcasts or whatever. Can't blame Jonah for cashing in and making the most of his hot New Japan run. If this WWE run goes the same way as the first then he can always come back to New Japan in front of a crowd who actually enjoy and appreciate his work. Yes, because he was exposed to all of these people before. Again, people are just eliminating context. These people have never seen Jonah before. They have absolutely no idea who he is. For starters, it was a crowd in Iowa. It was in Iowa. The, literally the middle of cornfields. Nobody knows who the fuck this guy is. All right? Nobody knows who he is. If it was New York or Chicago or Philadelphia, maybe people would have known. They would have watched NXT. They might have had some idea who he was. This was a show in Iowa. <laughs> Jonah Hill twerking his way back to the Fed is nasty. Bro was getting booked like a monster in New Japan and had his own unit. Uh, Yeah. Crazy thing about that is nobody knows anything about it. You have to watch that dry ass product in order to even know that it even happened. I'm not saying that WWE is like the best in the world right now, but that New Japan product, boy, that's that's just like finding a double cheeseburger wedge between the couch from 1999. That shit is stale as fuck. Is there anything going on in Japan? No. So it's like who the hell even cares about whatever he was doing in Japan? You know, if anything, his friends should have been like, yo, put me on, you know, <laughs> shit. C can you put in a call for me and let me get an NXT run out of this thing? I want to fly all the way to fucking Japan to wrestle mid card guys. For Christ's sake. Ugh. He called the man Jonah Hill, which is great because Jonah Hill, is, I think, wasn't that the fat kid from super bad? <laughs> then he said he was twerking. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is these people are Oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> Jonah went from beating Okada to redebuting to complete silence to be the Miz's lap dog. The Miz's lap dog. Oh. 
Oh my goodness. <sighs> Ooh. This shit stinks. Here's another one. Oh, this one's really good. I hope Jonah got a huge bag. Going from working main events with Okada to Miz's lackey is like going from being the sous chef in a five-star restaurant to sweeping the floors at a McDonald's. That's it's, it's almost exactly the same. You know? It's almost exactly the same. Being a sous chef in a five-star restaurant. Again, you think this guy won the G1. He didn't. He did not win the G1. All right? These people are so... It's mass delusion. These people all should be just rounded up and shoved inside of the funny farm. Nobody knows who the fuck these people are. All right? He didn't win the G1. <laughs> okay? He, he's not... He wasn't some top guy. He wasn't. They decided months ago that it was going to be Jay White versus Okada. Not Jay White versus Jonah. And now we have to cancel that big main event match because Jonah decided to jump ship and go back to WWE to be Mrs. Lackey. No, that didn't happen. He was never factored in. It fucked up. This is bad. Oh, I remember the buzz in the crowd right before Jonah pinned Okada in the G1. I'm personally disappointed that he won't get more of that. But it looks like Jonah has a decent slot. And you cannot deny the truism that a buck's a buck. They're basically calling him a sellout. Notice that, though. They're basically saying he's a sellout. But they're all of them are kind of like, you know, the boys should get paid more money, yada, yada, yada. So they can't just say, you're a sellout. All you care about is money. That's like the 90s version of this stuff. Now just they'll just be like, well, you know... I hope he makes all of his money, but I'm very personally very disappointed in you and that you should choose to do more of your art versus, you know, being paid. Money isn't everything, thick boy. <clears throat> anyway, these motherfuckers believe that by beating Okada, he should have challenged Roman in his return. You didn't even see that Okada and Jonah match. Stop being dumb, <laughs> which is hilarious because I didn't see it either. <laughs> I didn't see it. I didn't even know what happened until uh, I saw it on Twitter. So, and, I'm, and I mean, when I mean by saw it on Twitter, I mean literally saw it right after Jonah debuted. Like, literally. This match happened in, like, October, I think. <laughs> so, it's been two months and still nothing. Uh, so, New Japan trusted Jonah enough to beat Okada. Now he comes back to the WWE to beat the Miz's lackey. I'm sorry, I can't get behind that. Trips must have promised him all the gold in King Solomon's tomb. Shaking my head. No. Or he promised him that people will actually be able to watch him do what he does. And, and a fair opportunity to get over and become at the top of the card. Which is what a lot of these people complained about. If we're being honest. A lot of them feel like they barely got a chance to show what they can do. And that Vince made a snap judgment in releasing them. Especially the mass releases. That's what, he, what they felt. They felt like they were political pawns. And a lot of them were just like, okay, I want to get my fair shot. And I think Triple H giving them a fair shot is okay. I just think that some of them have, there's no point in bringing them back. Jonah or Slash, Big Boy, he's on the edge. He's not a definitely bring him back, but he's a guy where I'm not upset that he brought him back. All right. The AEW New Japan fans are mad Jonah Bronson Reed joined WWE to help The Miz after beating Radio Silence Okada in front of 300 people in a Japanese bingo hall tournament where the main event was the buffet. He probably likes money. Ooh, we, I one day hope to be this sharp. That's a sharp guy right there. What the fuck is new Japan pro wrestling management smoking? Because how the fuck do you let Jonah beat Kazuchika fucking Okada in the G1 and not sign him only for him to just go back to WWE so easily? Well, I'm thinking, you know, this is just me pitching some ideas. That uh, there were some guys named uh, Jonah and his management team that probably kind of figured this whole WWE thing was going to happen. They'd probably been in touch with WWE for a while and it was only a matter of let's find the right spot for you. Um, I don't see why the, being partnered up with The Miz is the right spot, but whatever. You know, it is what it is. Um, here's one. If Okada putting over Jonah was so valuable, 
that New Japan should have signed the man to a deal beforehand and paid him some of that big money Sasha is allegedly getting. That's a good point. That is a good point. For a company like New Japan to give you a moment like this in your first year with them and for you to be fumbled by going to be the Mrs. Bodyguard, bruh. I already remembered why the industry got monopolized so fast for a few years. Working smart, not hard, huh? Shaking my head. And it's just a picture of uh, Jonah shaking hands with Okada. Okay, sure. So what? You know, so what? I I just, I'm trying to give a fuck. I, I can't. I don't have enough fucks. Um, it makes me mad because his run this year made me a big fan of him to end it like this. Well, that's unfortunate. Being a work rate fan has got to suck because you, you get all interested in the work rate and the work rate stuff. And then they go somewhere where they make more money to do less and not be work rate artists. And you're just kind of like, but he can do a flying twisting splash why won't they let him do it it's like because there's no money in that nobody cares he's gonna tear up his knees wait we need him on tuesday <laughs> to do something else all right like he's got you know shit to do we can't go out here blowing his kneecaps all right anyway here's one other one it should have been archer i saw what it was the second he jumped slurping off h from japan in the middle of the g1 on here stanford syndrome is strong Stronger with talent than the fans who deny it. WWE is a cult that cosplays as a wrestling promotion. You know what? I think I think you're on to something. I think I think somebody should write a book about how it's how it's a cult. Hmm. Maybe pitch that idea to Bixen's band. Um, here's another one. Jonah clearly loved working for the WWE. He was heavily pushed on NXT and cried when he was released. Dude clearly loves working for Triple H. And as far as New Japan goes, they'll never stop chasing the U.S. market. They'll make Miz the IWGP champion if he ever wrestles there. <laughs> At some point, you have to stop putting Japan and New Japan on a pedestal and understand that, rest, that Japanese lifestyle and language isn't for everyone. Very few wrestlers from the West grow up dreaming of wrestling in Japan. It's nice to have on the resume, but eventually they return home. Yes, it's common sense. Very few Japanese wrestlers want to work in the United States. This is why you can't get some of them to jump ship and come over. You know, they look at the WWE or whatever, and they figure, eh, that's not really what I want to do. They want to be like the guys they grew up watching. It's cultural. Now, here's the, the weird thing about it being cultural is Jonah is not from the United States or from Japan. He's from, like, Australia. So, but I would imagine the, the WWE would be number one because it's an english speaking wrestling promotion he speaks english as a native language so i would imagine that would be the case but it's simple some guys grow up as tape traders you know japanese wrestling MV mvp was one of those guys for the record eddie kingston is another one these are hood dudes who grew up as wrestling fans and they didn't really like the wwe they were more into the japanese strong style stuff so Eddie Kingston tried for years getting into WWE, never got accepted, but he's accepted by the strong style fans because he wrestles that New Japan style. MVP worked in WWE for a long time. He felt like his career had stagnated. When he left, he went to Japan. He became the very first IWGP Intercontinental Champion, had a nice little run in Japan. Sometimes that's what people are more interested in. I think people are getting a little too emotional about this whole thing, but I mean, what do I know? This is ridiculous. Here's another one. Absolutely fair play to Jonah for making the decision that's right for him. But bloody hell, palling around with The Miz in the same year as beating Kazuchika Okada is the biggest drop in the history of wrestling. Ugh. Okay. Woo. You think so? I don't know. I probably, I, maybe if I put some real thought into it, I could probably think of something else that's a bigger drop off. But I'm not going to put that much thought into it because I don't care. Uh, let's see. Okada only lost to three people in 2022 singles competition. Tetsuya Naito, Jay White, and Jonah. That's it. So it's not something to just push aside. Uh, he's wrestling Jay White at Wrestle Kingdom. He's not wrestling Tetsuya Naito. I don't know what Naito's doing. So who cares, really? And Jonah's in WWE now. So shove it. How about that? Uh, Jonah feuded with and beat effing Okada 
And this company has him doing a plus one to The Miz. Joining the illustrious ranks of Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. I call it a joke, but it doesn't make me laugh. I just feel sad for the guy. You're right. I feel awful for The Miz. Um, I just can't believe The Miz has to keep carrying bums. Like it, Now it just does nothing but remind me that for the last, I don't know, several years, The Miz has just been the safe place to put bum-ass dudes like Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas and Alex Riley and all of these guys. We don't know what to do with them. Put them with The Miz. You know, I'm not sure what to do. Put them with The Miz. Now this fucking male dewdrop drop that everybody is acting like is some huge star is going to be palling around with The Miz. Fuck, fuck. I feel bad for The Miz. I really do. I hope he gets a bonus. I hope he gets a, you know, a bonus to have these guys carrying, following him around all this time. The Miz has been doing this shit for a long time, man. He don't need fucking Jonah. All right. He don't need him. He can get over on his own. So let's, let's just, let's just go full WWE Homer on this one. Cause you, you gotta be really interested in wrestling to get this far into this video. The Miz don't fucking need Jonah. All right. Jonah needs the Miz. Let's put it like that. If without the Miz, what the fuck is he going to do? Big boy splash. Urgh, I sit on you. So what? Can he talk? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I ain't never seen him cut a promo that was worth a damn. So no, the Miz doesn't need Jonah. Miz, Miz does not need Bronson Reed. He doesn't need him at all. You could have had anybody. There's already a hundred people on the fucking roster. You could have had the Miz. Could have came out there and helped the Miz. There's plenty of people in NXT that you could have had go the Miz bring up and help him win this match. It didn't have to. Be, it didn't have to be Jonah. It didn't have to be. We don't fucking need this guy. All right. He's not a must have for WWE or its fan base. That's why they gave him. No reaction whatsoever. That's why you can hear a mouse clapping cheeks during this whole thing. It makes no sense. Nobody needs this fucking guy. All right, so this has already gone longer than I wanted it to, but we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going until we squeeze as much juice out of this thing as we can. I've seen people say, no one cares Jonah beat Okada. He's, no, he's a nobody. WWE fans, are, and especially American WWE fans, are so thick. It's insane. Their thought process is just cause, C-O-Z, he's not in America means he's not popular. Nobody in WWE genuinely comes close to being as good as Okada. Again, nobody cares about your ability to do fucking short arm clotheslines, man. You, you mark out over a guy who does a drop kick for a high spot. Who cares, bro? Nobody gives a shit, bro. <laughs> I promise you nobody cares. Everybody swears that you're missing out on something if you don't watch Okada or Mr. Hawu Misawa or Kenta Kobashi. I love Kenta Kobashi, by the way. I, Okada's not bad. Naito, Nakamura, I like these guys. I watched some Japanese wrestling. I know I watched enough to know who some of these guys are. You're not missing nothing. All right. Trust me. If you are a wrestling fan, you never heard of these guys. You can be perfectly happy, have never seen not one Kazuchika Okada match. You can watch not one of them. None of them changed the industry. None of them mattered. You could give them 47 stars in the Tokyo Dome. None of it matters. It's just all for a very exclusive and elite club of people who say, I've seen the five-star classic. And most people just say, well, it didn't mean anything. You know, it, that's not... Japan has had these fucking matches, 45 minute matches. They do them all the time. And that's why they can't break into the American market. It is what it is. You know, it's a different culture, different. So whether, whether it's better or worse, can't say, can't say different. Uh, Jonah went back just to be Mrs. Bitch. Sad this man beat fucking Okada in the G1 climax. And now he's Mrs. Heavy. He was in the penthouse and eight New Japan fans loved him. Now he's in the outhouse being a bodyguard. Wow, just so sad. Oh, Lord. Ooh, we. Uh, I'm sorry, did Jonah beat Okada on his first night in New Japan? No. There is seriously no need for this negative comparison of Bronson Reed's WWE return. Well, no, no, no. Let him cook. I'm getting entertainment out of this. Let them cook. Let them let them cook. Let them do them. Jonah went from having one of the best G1 matches of the year against Okada to now debuting on Raw feuding with Dexter Loomis. Yeah, that that, that kind of sucks. But hey, 
You got to start somewhere. What are you going to do? He gonna, if he wrestled Roman Reigns, he would just lose. If he wrestled Gunter, he would just lose. So at least he can win these matches. You know, him beating Okada did nothing for him. He's not getting a title shot or anything like that. He's not wrestling Will Ospreay for the U.S. belt. He's not wrestling anybody for the Never belt. He's not the TV champion. He didn't have anything. What the fuck did he have going for him? You know? I don't know. It made no sense. Um, Okada was so good in the match that he got Jonah a WWE contract. Bret Hart versus Tom McGee levels of making someone look like a star. I know the answer is money, but he needed to stay in New Japan for at least another year. He was over there. He ain't over here. Oh, Okada made Jonah a star. Bret Hart, Tom McGee. Oh, wow. <laughs> that must have been one hell of a match. Too bad I didn't see it and nobody cares. All right. Um, these people, again, they need to be in the madhouse, bro. It's it's all ridiculous. <laughs> it's all ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> From a creative standpoint, seeing Jonah on Raw was disappointing. It felt like he was a perfect fit in New Japan, and the fact that they gave him a win over Okada last summer uh, says so much. Good for him. Can't blame him for his choice, but I wish he didn't tease that match with Shingo. How do you know that that match is not actually going to occur? We know that Triple H's regime is a little bit different from, from Vince's. Um, he might allow it to occur. You know, it still wouldn't matter. You know, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's seen it, does it really matter? You know, no, not really. Why the fuck is Jonah in WWE and helping the fucking Miz? Buddy literally beat Okada in the goddamn G1. Baffling. However, good for WWE. Jonah is a hell of a talent and a hell of a talented big man and wrestler at that. Okay. At least somebody was uh, somewhat positive. Ah, uh, yes. Imagine toppling the biggest star in Japan and fucking off to the state so you can face Dexter Loomis. Jonah could have easily had a G IWGP title shot if Okada beats Jay, but nah. Let me go back because Gargano, Emma, Cross, Scarlet, and many others are doing so well. All you've done is explain why Triple H shouldn't have brought back 90% of these people. All right. 90% of them shouldn't be brought back, you know, and I, I agree with that, that statement. They probably shouldn't be brought back. Uh, Jonah, however, doing great in New Japan, I guess it's great for his career, but me personally, people who are listening to this, a lot of people don't know that that match occurred, don't care, right? There's so many people who don't care that we're, it's just your, your, your Sisyphus trying to push this mountain up the hill. He beat Okada. He beat fucking Okada. And everybody was kind of, kind of like, so what? It's not Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's not Hulk Hogan, bruh. Like, so what? Oh boy. Jonah had a nice push and good matches with Okada in Nuge. <laughs> Nuge, N-O-O-G. And he ditched them for WWE the very first moment he had a chance to do so. Again. Bro thinks he's the machine gun. <laughs> They're calling New Japan Nuge now, which is which is hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh we. Um, these people are acting like Jonah showed up and beat Okada in his first match and was on some epic run. He only really had two great matches in his time there, both against a man who could have put on a banger with a sack of potatoes. So there's a lot of people who are, some of them are downplaying Jonah, which is hilarious. Some of them are trying to upplay this whole thing. But ultimately, so what, man? Like, it's just, it, none of this matters. I can't believe people are just upset about this. Uh, Jonah did say he wanted to be the new Vader. And there is nothing more Vader-like than leaving Japan in the Indies when you're at the top of your game to have a mid-run in WWE. Well, that was a year of New Japan building him up, wasted for beating Okada to being the Miz's bodyguard. Well, it looked like uh, maybe he should have, they should have pushed him a little bit faster instead of, you know, dragging their asses. If they really wanted him to be a top star, he really should have just been a top star. I mean, this is pro wrestling. You can just do that if you want, you know. If you just wanted to make a guy a top star, you just could, you know. You could have just did it. I mean, what was stopping you? <laughs> Nothing. Everybody knows that wrestling is booked. You know, it's a work. He could have came in and beat Okada 10 times, you know, and been a top star, been world champion wrestling him in Wrestle Kingdom. They didn't do that. 
You know? They chose, I guess. It sort of sounds like he was in a tag team or something. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, these people are... It's a joke. But I think it's funny. Uh, somebody said, This is on Jonah. When Triple H is pitching him on his return, why the fuck isn't Jonah cutting him off saying... I just beat Okada. Why the fuck would I be the heavy for the Miz? Well, because nobody cares. And I think that response to this guy is basically that. He says, because people are only just hearing today that he beat Okada in a company that wouldn't even sign him to a contract. You know, in a company that has almost no buzz, too. Don't forget that. He also has almost no buzz. So these people are just kind of really suffering. Really suffering. And I, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, this is great. The people on Twitter upset that Jonah went back to WWE after getting a W over, over Okada are taking professional wrestling way too seriously. My brothers and Terry Funk, this is oiled up men in spandex grabbing each other. It's high impact choreography. It's performance art. Chill. Under normal circumstances, this uh, high impact choreography, that all that kind of chatter with uh, give me a headache, but it's kind of like putting things in their proper perspective, you know? So I, I don't, I think that we, we all needed that little splash of water. Uh, here's one. It was never getting any better for Jonah that when the G1 went over Okada, which was the highlight of the clap crowds. So I understand him going back, but I'm disappointed. He's been slotted into the Miz's lackey role. Okay. Uh, pours out one for Jonah's New Japan run. It was a good one. A gone too soon. Man, Pen Okada now hangs with the Miz. K, cool, 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 cool. I'm sure he got the bag though. And if the bag is the thing, or US TV is where he wants to be, Mazel Tov. That's a man that's in pain, right? Cool, cool, cool. You're in pain, all right. You're suffering. You're you're in the corner somewhere, weeping. Like I ain't mad. I ain't mad at all. I want to look mad to you. Yeah, yeah, you're you're suffering. You're in a bad state of affairs, man. I feel bad for you. Um, call your girlfriend. Maybe she'll touch your pee pee. I don't know. Boyfriend, if that's your thing, I don't know. Um, fan one, that's Jonah. He beat Okada in the G one. Fan two, who's Okada? Fan three, what's a G one? <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> That's a perfect <laughs> encapsulation of the WWE audience. What's a G1? Who's an Okada? Why should I care about this guy? None of that has to do with this guy. Who is this fat dude? Um, but it's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> um, here's another one. Look, Jonah didn't imp impress at all in the G1. His one over Okada got a big reaction because Okada rarely jobs. But still, it seemed like New Japan had plans for him. And Fool went back to WWE to be the latest lackey of The Miz. Okay. Sure. Um, I guess so. Look, none of this. Uh, let's, let's find one to, uh, to end on. Because we got to wrap this up. All right. I've held you guys long enough. It's time to wrap it up. Okay, here's, here's one. It's not to finish, but, you know, let's just put this one on the barbecue. Bro, they let Jonah beat Okada. He had a sweet gig in New Japan. Some people are just a mark for the Fed, huh? No, a mark for the Fed? What do you mean? It's the money. They, they're, they're doing this for money. Okay? They're not doing this for, for, fin, for fun. Okay? Or for friendships. LOLing at Gato, given that Jonah Merchant, the biggest W against Okada, only for the man to reportedly go back to the E. Reportedly? What do you mean reportedly? You don't have a television? You're on Twitter. This was not long ago. He literally just popped up on Raw. Um, so, weird. Here's the one. I think this was a good one to close on. It's not a funny one. But it puts everything in perspective in a way that makes a lot of sense to me. Marks are really out here saying, why the fuck would Jonah go back to the Fed? And then cites having like one match with Okada as why he shouldn't have perfectly encapsulates everything that, that I really have been considering here. You have one match with Kazuchika Okada, no matter how good that match was, 
whether you won that match or lost it. It's one match. You would have thought they would have had this string of matches that they would have been talking about. No, it's just one. One match. The entire time he's been gone from WWE. Let's, let's expand that. Not just his New Japan run, but he was an impact. Like I said before, he was an impact. Out of this whole time that he's been gone. He's had zero promos that made any impact on the business. He's had one match. One. And these people have literally spent their entire night melting down, foaming at the mouth, just acting up, scratching the walls because a guy had a good match with Kazuchika Okada, won that match, and then went back to WWE. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus Christ. If that didn't show you how deranged wrestling fans can be, I don't know what else to tell you. They're fucking out of their minds. It's mass delusion. And I, I couldn't have put it better myself. All right. Like, share, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.